Once you tow in, then we can regulate it. Do you want to Please call. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is everybody wearing masks? Damn it. I'll be I am right back. <laughs> I think this the statement where you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. <laughs> I think we made him drink. I think we did. We need a coffee straw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a coffee straw. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, welcome to the Porter County Stormwater Management Board meeting. It's July 14th, just a little after 9 o'clock. We're going to get right into the consent agenda for the drainage board. Uh, you can see the cases here uh, that are outstanding. Uh, we have one to retire and remove an above ground gas regulator. Uh, uh, this I think was heard last night at the swab board meeting. Uh, now both, and then we have one from Troyer Group, and this is uh, uh, giving them permission to install a fiber optic cable around some uh, four regulated drains, West Hills Ditch, Block Ditch, Parker Ditch, Gill Even, Terrace Arm, and Parker Ditch. Uh, Mike, what was the recommendations uh, out of the swab meeting last night? Yeah, thank you. Uh, for the, the NIFSCO case uh, and within Phillips Ditch, uh, the Stormwater Advisory board, uh, board recommended approval of the application um, one of the requirements outlined in the staff report, plus a requirement to uh, make sure that the landowners are contacted in advance of the work. Okay. Uh, the other case, uh, this advisory board recommended a continuation of that case. Uh, the applica applicant wasn't present, and there were a few uh, outstanding questions uh, regarding their work, so they recommended continuation of, of that case. Okay, so... On the consent agenda, Scott, where we have a, a continuation, do we still approve for the consent agenda based on his comments of the continuation? Correct. Okay. That's the recommendation. This has never had that happen before, I don't think. It's sort of a new one. So we can just, so the drainage board, which is the commissioners, uh, will go ahead and uh, take action. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I still got some claims yet here. I'm sorry. Uh, Cobb Ditch, uh, we have claims for the regulated drains. This is drainage board approval again. The Cobb Ditch, $135.35. Foxborough Run Subdivision, $9,254.53. Hunter Point Subdivision, $2,360. Parker Ditch, $2,000. Pleasant Township Ditch, $1,500. Rolling Metal Subdivision, $1,305.45. That is the consent agenda. I'll put it to the floor. Motion to approve consent agenda. For second. Yep, we have a motion and a second for consent agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, now we're going to move into the consent agenda for the Stormwater Management Board. Um, and we have claims, County Road 400 North, $7,000. Brummett Acre Subdivision, $1,620. Carriage Hill Subdivision, $1,447.50. Over Hill Subdivision, $25,928.47. Corner Farm Estate Subdivision, $2,433.50. Crooked Creek, $3,220. Foxboro Run Subdivision, $19,558.19. Galbraith Ditch, $675. Graham Wood Subdivision, $1,080. Henderson Ditch, $1,300. Kemper Ditch, $150. Lettington Ditch, $137,334. Oak Hill Road, $1,775. Sherwood Forest Subdivision, $265. Stone Creek Subdivision, $1,515. Sullivan Manor Subdivision, $2,425. And True Subdivision, $472.50. Uh, and then we have one claim for the old South Haven uh, South. Oh, that's a claim for the fund. That's a claim for the bond fund. 
We have Old South Haven South Central Storm Sewer, $487,220.35, and I'll put it to the floor for the stormwater consent agenda. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Full same sign. Motion carries. Uh, Stormwater Management Board, we're going to get into qualifications based selection. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over to our well rested county engineer, Mike Novak. Yeah, we're going on, going on a camping trip with three young kids. Restful vacation, but uh, I, I, I am glad to be back. Uh, on, on the agenda here is uh, revisiting our Shorewood Forest. Uh, subdivision stormwater infrastructure, infrastructure study. If you will recall, back at the, uh, I think it was the June, our last meeting, maybe it was the May meeting, but we had uh, rejected all uh, re responses to our request for qualifications uh, with, the, with the caveat that we were going to conduct interviews with uh, four firms as well as uh, ask for supplemental information from them uh, to add to their request for to our re their response for, to our request for qualifications. Uh, so uh, myself and, and our, uh, my assistant, our assistant county engineer, Adam McAlpine, uh, conducted those interviews in the field, uh, took a look at some problem spots, walked some ravines with the four consultants, which were Christopher Burke, uh, DLG, Abin Marsh, and then um, uh, Watson Fisher and Cardno teamed up. So we conducted interviews with, with the four of them, uh, asked them uh, a series of questions, asked for a formal response to a series of questions uh, based on the overall outcome of our process. So considering the response to our request for qualifications, as well as the interviews and the supplemental information we received uh, as part of that interview process, uh, Adam and I feel most confident in moving forward and entering negotiations with, on a contract with Christopher Burke Engineering. Uh, we feel their well-rounded experience um, in terms of public outreach in this project is going to be very important, uh, public outreach and education component, but as well as their uh, civil design experience as well as experience with natural areas design, ravine type restoration, stream restoration type work. Uh, and, and being that they're able to be able to provide all those services in, from in-house, not having a team with another firm, uh, we felt really good about that. And we've had a good working relationship with them on uh, a couple of other projects. So that is our recommendation to you uh, here this morning, is to uh, allow staff to enter negotiations on, a, on scope and fee with Christopher B. Burke Engineering uh, on the Sherwood Forest subdivision uh, stormwater infrastructure study. Okay. Uh, any questions of Mike? Uh, we also have uh, Luke Sherry from Christopher Berg in the audience. If you guys have any questions for for Luke. Yeah, my question, Mike, is um, from you know if if this board were to take action today. Um, what what type of uh, timeline are we looking at for uh, public public outreach, um, is, is this all going to happen in the next six months, in the next nine months? Is there some design work that needs to be done first? Is, is, the, is the public thing going to be more towards the beginning because we're going to be gathering data? Uh, just want to know how that's yeah. going to, because you know, we get calls out there. Absolutely. And uh, whether right or wrong, we get calls out there. Yep. And I think that from a messaging standpoint, I think the, the sooner that we can let people know yeah. that we're moving in a direction. Um, so that's, that's my questions and concerns for more than anything, just to let people know out there that something is coming. Whether the people or not, they know the schedule that's coming, that it's here to, and that they expect to consult. I think that's a good tactic. So let, let me address. Yeah, let me address the question. And maybe we don't know yet. It's no, still food, but no. I, I think I think we do know that. I okay. Think, I think we we definitely want we want to do two things with the public outreach and education process. One is to do exactly what you, you guys are bringing up this morning, which is to engage uh, the property owners, let them know what our vision is, where we're going, 
why we're doing it this way, and, and start to talk about the context of all the problems that people have reported out there and that, that we've talked with them up in the field about. And we you know, said, hey, this isn't necessarily a high priority problem because it really only affects your backyard and uh, the fix would do more, you know, be more invasive than you probably want. So it, it provides us with the opportunity to do exactly what you're saying. So we want to start that process early on. And that may be, you know, in light of our, the COVID-19 and ongoing response, that may wind up being um, something atypical from our um, typical public open house type format. We may do smaller group type meetings and actually go to different cul-de-sacs in the neighborhood and, and make sure we're physically distant and be able to look at problems on that scale, or we might do a video conference and that, or some combination of a few different things. But we want to do that up front and then throughout the process. So we'll start that, kind of the idea of putting a message out to them as well as collecting information from them, and then throughout the process, keep them engaged. Hey, here's where we're at, here's where we're going, here's our concept designs as we get closer to the end of the project, here's our prioritization and ranking, for example. So they're, in, they're involved and engaged through the process because we really want them to do this as, as their plan as well. So you're thinking that will still happen this year? I think that will still happen this year, get, get, get underway this year. So timeline-wise, I mean, I think we can uh, get to uh, a scope and fee with Christopher Burke probably within the next month um, to be able to kind of do a kickoff and to get, to get back to some of these people with a bigger, with more context. Right, and more content. Um, and then we are, but I would also note the department continues to do uh, necessary repair and projects oh, yeah. out in Sherwood. Yeah, so I, I know we're not that stopping. I know that. that. I, it's I'm not as if we haven't done work, right? It's just that we haven't. A couple of complaints we got. Yes. You know, well, we know something's in the works, but we don't, you know, and right. that really has a lot to do with COVID because we were ready to move on. And, and, in, and internally in Shorewood, as of early this year, they had turnover from internal property um, uh, director of the property yeah. association to an outside management company. So there's some lost institutional knowledge there and sort of a reset button on that. So that's part of the, the overall I didn't know that. That makes sense. Within uh. Shorewood. So we try to engage, of course, the property owners association and committees associated with the POA throughout the last four yeah. years. So when you have turnover on that side, you lose right, some of that relationship and communication. And that's, where, that's where we're at. And that's why I think starting with Burke, starting to study, show them what we've already done, show them where we're going, how everything sort of works together, lower priority problems are here, high priority problems that are causing roads to flood, or roads to fail, and ravines to erode away are up here. Here's how we have to attack them, and we're developing concepts to address all of them. Right, and that's going to be our process. Do you think that there's going to be uh, a lot of uh, access issues in, in up there, more so than what we experienced in South Haven, because that's yes. always sort of a unknown factor going into we, this. We have we have two well two challenges related to access. Certainly, physical access to range. Yeah. Like trying to get in between houses in steep terrain and ravines. Sometimes the ravines themselves are the only access route. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the other constraint here is that the property owners themselves are basically hold the easement, the rights and responsibilities to easement. They're essentially restrictive covenants to all the on those all those drainage easements that are plotted. So you have property owners that really need to convey their drainage easements to the county before we can spend public dollars on private property, okay? And then if they're not if they're not directly impacted by whatever is going on right now, we just kind of need to move through and cut down some trees and yeah. move landscaping. They may may not be uh, well, we've had some of that willing to be we've had some of that already. Exactly. And yeah. So the, those are the two sort of you know constraints that in terms of access and getting work done that we're gonna have we've had in Shorewood and we'll continue to have. Uh, as we work in, in the subdivision. One of the things that I would like to see come on this report, and maybe this is part of the process, I don't know, but I think it's very important that whatever report we get back, the starting of that report talks about the history of how we got here. Sure. Because remember, this was supposed to be a private development, yep. is what it originally started out to be. And then, yep. so the 
that's important, I think, because that's where the county access, that's where the hitch and the giddy up was, was when that took place, that transfer took place. It was just, you're taking on the financial responsibility, but nobody came back and cleaned up all the legal aspects of it. And I think, I think it's important to tell that story so when people are, Absolutely. Um, that might have moved here three years ago, they don't know what happened here 50 years ago. And I think it just, it just helps us set up the story better so people understand how we got there. It's not about talking about the past. It's about bringing the people that are there now up to speed with where we're at and why we're doing it's the, Yeah, it's the answer to the simple question. Everybody around the county thinks that, well, because I'm paying a stormwater fee now, <laughs> what, you can just go and do whatever you want. Right. right? Well, no, absolutely not. We have, you know, we can't just trespass. Whether it's the right thing to do or not, you can't just go onto somebody's private property and do something. You have to have the land rights. You have to have the responsibility to take care of it. We don't want to spend a bunch of money and then have the property owner decide, yeah, I don't like that anymore, and wipe it away, right? So that's not typical citizen doesn't understand those nuances right. of, of our program and how all these subdivisions across the county, not just Shorewood, but many, many others were set up for private maintenance, whether it was a POA or whether it left the private property owners responsible for handling their own stuff. We're trying to correct that. Right. And, and, but that's, there, that takes time and that takes legal And effort. it's going to take probably input from and a, a lot of homeowners. That's out there. right. That's because they have the concerns about signing over that right. little easement that's platted on the plat of subdivision. Well, what's going to happen? Am I going to lose my landscaping? Am I going to... Mm -hmm. You know, all the questions have to be answered. Regardless, we need to adhere to that principle of getting the access for yeah, maintenance for have the to. future. Or don't do it. Or spending dollars. Or we can't, or or we can't do, do it. it. We have problems with the future owners. Yeah. The, the other thing I might mention, doing this history, it'd be good uh, to talk to the property managers from the past, uh, Julie Whitmer, I think her last name is, and Christian Anderson, both managed the Shorewood Property Association for years. And they probably have a unique insight into some of these issues as well. Yeah, and we had, until Julie retired earlier yeah. this year, we had been working closely with Julie. Yeah. Um, so I had collected quite a bit of information, had a good relationship with Is her. Is she still local? Yes. She's still available. Yeah, and so around. Yes. just made her bigger, so, so bigger to come to the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so is Christian. Christian yes. was there a I, long I period to, of time. Yeah. Yeah. Involved them really perhaps the in that manager. background yeah. uh, up front okay. material. We're, yep. My last question, um, obviously we're working on, we would be working on a report. At what part and phase of the report would you think that we would have an understanding of? And, and if, you, if you don't know, just, I'm, but sure. I'm trying to get it, what do we think the ticket for this is going to be? Now, I know until you get into some concepts and some other things, you really don't know, but... That's, that's another important number to tie back to the fee and some of the other things that, yes. uh, you know, I'm sure we're further down the road till we get to that point, but I just know for myself, I think that's going to also help us message uh, the importance of, of why we're doing this. And you're suggesting that consultant that be one of his first target. Yeah, because when we did the DLZ report years ago for the 10 top items, they gave us a dollar amount. Yeah. Now, whether it was close or not, I, I don't know, but I always think it's good to put a flag in the ground to let you know that in today's dollars, we're estimating, but you, we always have disclaimers. I mean, I look at the ravine restoration as probably sort of a wild card mm -hmm. uh, at this point, because you really don't know how you're that's right. What, what concepts are going to work there? That's right. Um, but, and I'm not asking for that today or tomorrow or anything. I just know from my perspective that number to me is really well, important for how this board goes forward. Well, it's most important. Yeah, it's most important for us to run our program, right? We can't program our capital improvements and our maintenance without having some idea of what those hold back, what we're going to need for this, improvements and exactly. maintenance are going to cost. So the, the, Jeff, the, the corollary here is to do basically get a similar product to what we had for Old South Haven, yep. uh, to what we're developing now in Greater South Haven uh, with DLZ. Same idea here. So we'll be left with concepts, so whether it's Burke or some other design firm can pick up on where 
the concepts left off, and we'll have a, a, a dollar amount in mind, a budgeting, a planning level right. estimate. If you go out to a public outreach and you say, we're getting ready to invest approximately $90 million out here, or whatever the number is, I don't know. Right. But I mean, that's to me, it's part of the messaging to let yeah. people know that this is serious. This is this is big time, and that we're we're venturing into this. And I think that'll give us some some flexibility to move within that. And so that's the only reason I'm asking. Absolutely. And the reason we do this study, right, rather than just go at problem by problem, is we want to use the fee payers' right. money most efficiently, right? When we can package projects, when we can do large scale projects, rather than doing one here, one there, one there, one there. We're saving time, we're saving money, and if they're not immediate priorities, not immediate urgent issues that need to be corrected, uh, this is the way to go. Yeah, because of proximity of all your projects, that'll give you the scale of it. Okay. But this is That's your business going. plan overall, of course. Uh, I, if there's no other discussion, I'll just make a motion that we uh, allow the um, staff to go ahead and engage Christopher Berg to do this study for a short course. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Uh, any other further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Sir, you have quite a job ahead of you. Yeah. And I know we do too, but we're, we're anxious to tackle it. And uh, I think with our success and what we've done up in South Haven, and I know you guys had a piece to play in that up there as well too, um, mm -hmm. This is what this is why this board was established is to start doing these heavy lifting projects while in the same breath fixing all the little problems that are out there too. So um, it's an exciting time, um, and uh, I think Shorewood Forest uh, now has a, a, a bright always had a bright future, but this is going to be even better going forward. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be some interruptions too, but it's all in the name of progress. So. I'm, a, I'm excited. Thank you. Um, next up, quote acceptance contract awards. What do you got here? Yeah, this is a follow-up from February timeframe. We had never got a full quote form and uh, contract for, uh, annual construction and maintenance services contract from AccuDig. Uh, they did submit just annual rates at the time we opened quotes, but. This is the they provided the additional needed information. So at this time, we're recommending that uh, the board approve this annual uh, services agreement with AccuDig for for the year 2020. Uh, motion to approve. <coughs> second. We have a motion and a second for an annual contract to make services agreement for 2020 for AccuDig. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Washington Square. So if you'll recall, we opened uh, quotes uh, on this project last meeting. Um, Meredith, if you would forward ahead. Go forward. So Washington Square, if you guys will recall, right over on the east side of the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Ridge Road, south of State Road 2. Um, go forward one more. So this is the project. We're essentially reconstructing uh, the storm sewer system that serves as the outlet for the detention basin as well as uh, adjacent area, areas adjacent to the subdivision itself. Um, what we did, if you'll go forward one more, Meredith, uh, based on the quotes that were open last time, our, our engineer's opinion of probable cost was 100, about $147,500. Um, the quotes came, both came in. We got two. Both came in quite a bit higher than where we're at. So. We took a look at value engineering. How could we maybe uh, save some, um, have some efficiencies on this project and save uh, a little bit of money? This was primarily on the trucking, right, of the dirt? Uh, this, well, this one, the, the scope is kind of a scope. So what we decided to do, the detention basin is actually in pretty good shape right now. It just doesn't drain, it holds water all the time. So if, you know, if you'll go back, what we decided to do in discussions with golf is just take that detention basin work out of the scope at this time um, and just basically rebuild the outlet uh, and then see how the detention basin reacts. If we need to address that and do some additional grade work in the future, we can do that. Um, so we took out the, that work item that saves some trucking and haul-off costs, the earthwork associated with that detention basin work, 
And then they also agreed to a reduction in their mobilization and demobilization costs to reflect the fact that they weren't doing this you know, additional scope. So uh, that's what we're presenting to you this morning is basically revised quote and contract um, with Golf uh, in the amount of uh, $157,667.90. And, and is that pretty sandy over there? Uh, there, there is some sandy pocket. soil. Pocket, yes, pockets mm -hmm. are the same. Okay. That's what I thought. There's just one day. Okay, any questions of the board? Now, previously, uh, about 20 years ago, the outlet, uh, the drainage board realized the outlet still wasn't low enough, so they set the manhole structures over uh, closer to the county road low enough and got the permission from the airport that they worked with. They never had the money to lower the outlet to the pond back. So the pond always held just a little bit of water, a foot, two foot, but it was just uh, always an aggravation. Just, yeah, just enough to be a nuisance and not provide sort of full, you know, capacity for, for the detention. And our goal to be, just have detention basins for uh, the nuisance, for the public safety, uh, rather than these little retention ponds that might hold a couple feet of water and mosquitoes and all sorts of other things that uh, we'd rather not have. So this is uh, kind of the final step. I'm glad to see that we're taking it. Good. Any other questions? Okay, we have uh, we have uh, a vote in front of us here to okay. the board. I don't think we did. Yeah. Motion to approve the second. contract with Dawson. And we have a second with Jim, Commissioner Biggs. So we have a motion and a second for Golf Inc for Washington Square Stormwater Management System Improvements for a dollar amount of $157,667.90. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Project update. I'll just mention that that first phase that we did, all we had was $20,000 available. So, and that was based on an assessment. But, uh, I'm glad here again, again. Next again. Yeah. 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 Okay, project. Uh, happy to report. Uh, so far this year, uh, we've initiated 84 projects uh, with a uh, contract value of almost $8.2 million. Uh, 13 of those are large scale cap capital improvement projects that you guys have awarded contracts through a, a bidding or a quote process. And then 71 of those have been uh, smaller work order uh, projects. Uh, repair, maintenance uh, type work on our regulated and public drainage infrastructure. Average value of those work orders is about $7,800 uh, for the year. Um, is Rich Grover back there? Yep. Um, Rich, would you just come up a little bit? Want to, I, I have the Greater South Haven Infrastructure Study uh, on the agenda. Just a brief update on where things sit with that. And again, this is this is another effort to create basically a master plan for Salt Creek Valley Commons, New South Haven, and Coventry uh, subdivisions. So Rich is managing this for us, and Rich is the hey Rich about where right. things are at. So DOZ has finished the initial survey of uh, the structure uh, in New South Haven, Coventry, and Salt Creek Commons. They've identified about 2,000 structures that we need to locate and carry. Right now, so uh, we're getting close, you know, to having the the data collected. Uh, hopefully, here by the end of the month, we'll have the varied stuff identified and, and surveyed. And then after that, we're going to be doing video. So we'll have all the structures and pipes sort of locked down. We'll do a video inspection, just like we did in Old South Haven, and figure out what kind of pipe condition the pipes are in, how much crap we, we have to clean out of the pipe, what kind of options then do we have for rehabilitation, reconstruction uh, type work on the community. And after that, we'll start doing the community outreach. 
Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rich. We've, we've certainly had some nice weather, though, other than hot. We have. Yes. Very hot. But. <laughs> yes. Um, and then just a brief rundown, a uh, quick rundown, I guess, on where we're at with the uh, rest of the old, the old South Haven project. Um, the Northeast Stormfield project, which is Governor Road, the Honda. Uh, punch list items are all but finished. We need to do a final walkthrough. Um, and get and get Grimmo paid out on their final invoicing. So we're just about completely wrapped up with, with that one. I mean, it's been performing really well. There were really minor items to be uh, finished up. Really, a lot of touch-ups to sodding and landscaping work that had been done. Uh, the South Central Stormfield Project. Meredith, if you would forward just uh, a slide. So this this is an overview of the project. Um, and I, I wanted to get some pictures in here, but I was having trouble getting my phone to talk to my computer this morning. <laughs> but uh, essentially, all the storm sewer work is um, all the storm sewer work is done. Uh, all the underdrain work is done. So we put uh, connected all those old private drains to underdrain, so we're not going to have water spilling out to the roadway like we have throughout a lot of the rest of Old South Haven. Um, a lot of the curb and gutter is already done. A lot of driveway approaches are already done. Uh, and they're pretty well, the office is pretty well on target to reach substantial completion by the end of the month, so the contract. So uh, next step will be paving and uh, the outfall work around the detention basin that's located in the hollow park. Um, things are really moving along nicely. And if you've been up in that area recently, I, I think it looks, it looks really nice as we're, as we're finishing up. So uh, we'll still have restoration, sodding, and heating work to do. Um, as we get into the cooler season, um, but that's that's where we're at for that, for that project. Yeah, Mike. I know when we had our last out outreach up there in South Haven, there was a couple of people that were obviously they were upset because we weren't doing their street yet. But right. We also had a couple of folks where taking a look at this pine wood here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know where the work ends. We always have those transition issues there. Right. And I just want to make sure that why we're punching out and we're looking at this stuff, even though that might not be included in the scope of work. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we're bridging that old new deal. Yep. And it might just be, in, you know, and that's something that I think maybe our highway department can help us out. If it's just a matter of doing some grading, doing a little bit of work, but I just want to make sure that those people that were just 50 feet away right. from being mm -hmm. done, that we handle those transition areas a little bit better. It, th this is this is not a complaint or anything. I'm just, I think when you sure. break a project down like this, mm -hmm. those are sort of the, those are sort of the transition areas are always the, the tough areas. And I just want to just speak out for it a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a lot of work or anything like that, but just be cognizant of it. That's all. Sure. Oh, well, I, th I think we did a really nice job of that on the Northeast project. Okay, good. Um, we'll, do the, we'll do the same here. I, I mean, I can talk about specifically where Pinewood, the work on Tidewood ends on the west side, so like at Cornwall. There's always been a big dip right. there. Mm -hmm. As That's part of our work, we've, we've flattened that sag out a little bit. Okay. So that, that resulted in some changes to some driveway approaches. It resulted in a chasing to work back farther on Pinewood than we would have necessarily had to do if we weren't really considering that. So I know we've got some issues, too, that came up on uh, Pinewood on the east side of the project. Just pavement buffering. So we'll make sure that those get addressed, too, and, and those intersections get corrected. Okay. But, yeah, if there's other items, grading, tie-in type stuff that we can identify, we'll get that taken care of, too, as we wrap Okay, as we wrap thank up. you. I'm just... Absolutely. Just throwing it out there. No, the worst... Yeah, I mean, the worst thing is, like you said, as a resident, was he's the next lot down the street, right? And he's got, everybody else has got new drivers. So close! And he's left and he's with puddles in his front yeah. So if there's something we can do... That's that, what I'm talking about. water to move, you know, to move, make sure we're, we're pushing they it down the They put up with so much over there, and then they end yeah. up with a little bit of this. It's more, to me, it's more just trying to be sensible yeah. of what, ha what has happened just good up there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. There you go. Those have both the custom work and the finished project and the that right at the end of the... Yeah. So in the hotel business, we call it the shiny penny rule. You put yeah. the shiny penny <laughs> against the old penny and... Yeah, it's just how it works. But thank you, Mike. I just wanted to throw sure. that out there. I know you guys are on it, but I just... No, I was remiss. It's very important for me. It is yeah. an important point. Tying the ribbon at the end is always the right. That's that's how you get measured. So, so Mike brought up something that we just have to watch too. We were adjusting the We got to look at the sideways, sidewalks, yards. It's never expanding project, but we want to make it look as pretty as possible. But we have our own equipment now, and we have engineers in house. So a lot of these little things we can we can bang out in house. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be sort of part of the project, you know, sure. but it's, it's, it's a byproduct of the project. No, and then I, that's right. Can we go for you yeah. for the resources we've got? So Thank you. Okay. But the, the visual effect, you know, of what we've done out there is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Some of that, that, most of that actually has looked that way for over 50 years. Yeah. It's, it's it's going to be interesting with the value, of the property value, what it will do the property value with all that new infrastructure setting outside the front door. I think I told Mike, this is about nine months ago, after we finished, what was the first step? Was that governor? Yeah, it was governor. Right. And we got governor closed, and I remember driving through there right after, on that stretch of road, there were nine signs out on houses where they were getting their siding and their roof stuff. So I think, you know, that investment is spurring more investment mm -hmm. in the real estate there. And that, that was the intended consequence, I think, of what what we're doing. So if, uh, I mean, those were the signs that I saw going down that one road and seeing that many signs out in front of people's yard. I was sort of taken back. I was, I was expecting that, but to see it so quick sure. was gratifying, yep. I thought. Yep. So... That was my take, but you're right, Jim. Any other? Um, just and then just really briefly, um, the storm sewer lining and rehab project is going is going pretty well. Um, I emailed you guys a couple weeks ago about our uh, Meredith. Would you go ahead just a couple slides about the issues we are having on uh, Baltimore Road? One more. Uh, that would be on the right side of your screen from La Honda North. That's a big 54 inch line. Probably the single worst <laughs> storm sewer in South Haven. Um, we tried to clean the line. We, we've had repeated problems there. And to, to me, um, it, it's worth it to, we're not, we're not going to pursue the lining work anymore. We're going to go open front reconstruction on that uh, and do it right. Because beyond our ability to do point repairs, we also have a big kind of 150 foot sag in the pipe that presents some, some real challenges to the lining process itself. Um, so it'll be a little more costly to do the open trench construction, but we, we'll know we'll have a good product at the end. Uh, what's shown on, in red on the screen here are site segments that have already been lined. So they started lining last week right after the 4th of July holiday. Um, there to the go back to the other two exhibits. They focused their work in sort of the uh, uh, we're going to areas and then the areas adjacent to the Midway Drive detention basin. Here, if you go back to the uh, along the, the east side of that detention basin, which that project is just about ready to start. We've got a pre-construction conference coming up on Thursday morning, I believe it is, and Dyer construction is ready to roll. Good news, I just saw yesterday, Fort well, I don't know if it's good news, but for our project, it's good news. Porter Township is going to be doing uh, e-learning to start the year. Yeah, Porter Township right. School. We will kind of be open to, to continue our excavation and, and detention basin work without really interrupting uh, the school day for, for the kids. School bus traffic. No school bus traffic. Yeah. So, that's just a brief update on where uh, sort of all the South Haven stuff is at. Happy to entertain any questions the board might have on our programs and, and projects. No, it's, you drive around there, and it's obvious that we're reinventing the whole you know, system. Yeah, it's remarkable. It's brand new, I mean, completely rehabilitated. 
and reconstruct it going to stormwater infrastructure. Okay. One other brief thing, Meredith, would you pull up the, the new website? So our new website is now live, active. Um, I think it's, uh, our staff did a great job helping pull this together. We still have more content, and this is a, it'll be a, a lifetime process, you know, updating content, adding mm -hmm. content when appropriate. But I just think that the organization, the layout, the uh, visual of the website uh, is an asset for our program. It just gives, gives people a new way to communicate with us, to reach information that, you know, we had on our own website, old website, but wasn't necessarily that easy to find. So a little bit more intuitive and a little bit more mobile friendly, of course, too. So mobile device friendly. Um, yeah, and it gives us the opportunity to put new flats and upcoming events and, uh, you know, little blurbs about projects, highlights uh, right up front on our are both our websites linked to each other? They are. Okay. So when you, if you go to the Florida Code slash Stormwater, it'll take you right to our okay. new website. So it helps us with Making that. Making sure we're connected. Yep. So yeah, that's just wanted to let you know that's now up and, and running. Nice. Great. Good news. Yep. Okay. Any other questions for the board? Like you guys have been busy out there. Yes, so, uh, we have. And we're coming too, it looks like. So, uh, well, I think our next board meeting is on August 11th. Uh, same, same place, same time. Uh, and with that, is there anybody here wishing to address this board? I don't see anybody. And with that, this meeting stands in recess. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Everybody.